You're still doing this? Mr. Super... Oh, God, wait! Let's get this review started. Hello and welcome back to the show. I'm Mr. Subarashi, and this is the new and improved Subarashi Selections. After taking a much needed rest after watching... Yeah, that. We've decided to change a few things. But one thing hasn't changed, folks, and that's my love for anime. So today we'll look at a 80s action flick simply known as... The Samurai. Our mediocre movie starts with a cliché as our hero Takashi is late for school. Mom! It's all ready, dear. Okay. Thanks, I'm off. Have a good day, son. Wow. I haven't seen that since... Oh... Sailor Moon, Avon, Galleon, Pre-Tier, Princess 2-2, Cat Returns, Miyuki Chan in Wonderland, Back to the Future, the entire plot to Big Fat Liar, and every opening to Pepper Ann, but I digress. Fortunately, Takashi arrives at school just in time to find two criminals holding up the class for money, which, honestly, doesn't make any sense for multiple reasons. Like, how much money could a bunch of high schoolers possibly have between a classroom of, like, 20 plus a teacher? 100? Maybe 200 at most? Good job, assholes. You got grocery money for the week. Like, I guess if they went room to room they'd get more cash, but wouldn't the school be on lockdown by then? And another thing, how are they planning to escape? Are they planning to just drive away? I don't know if you've seen school shootings before, guys, but uh, the gunners usually don't make it out, and if they do, it's usually in handcuffs. Before I move on, can I talk about how useless the police are in this movie? The first time we see them, they seem to have blocked off this street for absolutely no reason at all. I assume it's implied that they are searching for the criminals as well, but look at this. They're way over here, and I'm only counting four cop cars and seven cops. There is a school being held hostage by two psychopaths looking to rob broke-ass high schoolers. Call in the SWAT! Anyway, Takashi breaks through the door, scaring the crap out of one of the bad guys, but there's still one left. What are you gonna do? Don't do anything stupid, kid, or I'll blow her pretty little head off. Atsuko, you are a daughter of Japan. If this is indeed your day to die, face it not with fear, but courage. Oh. Takashi, you stupid lunatic! You better not do anything to get me killed! Don't worry, little flower. Your suffering will end quickly. Did I hear that right? Takashi plans on sacrificing this girl's life just to save the rest of the class. I don't want to pretend that I understand the ways of the samurai, but Wikipedia does! And killing your friend to stop a bad guy is definitely not one of the seven virtues of Bushido. But what do I know? Let's see what happens. Make peace with your savior, foul villain. Don't move! For now you face Takshi Chimatsuri Samurai! <laughs> Theme song? What? Huh? What? 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 Huh? That's right, this 40 minute barely a movie anime has a theme song to it. Like any good anime, it features a bunch of scenes that don't have anything to do with what will actually be shown. But whatever, maybe the song will be good.
distraction is over, Takashi cuts two bullets in half and seems to either dodge or eat this last one. What is this? What is happening here? He cuts the guy, but there's no blood or wound, yet he falls over writhing in pain anyway. Maybe it was a reverse blade sword? But even if that was the case, he was traveling so fast he made the bullets look slow. The guy should look more like this, and the wall should look more like this. We then see the police taking the criminals and then speeding away from the scene. How backwards is it that they show up late for the actual crime, and then once it's over, they drive away as fast as they can? I'd say that was more than enough excitement for one day, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's almost as if you should, I don't know, cancel class today before that pesky post-traumatic stress kicks in. So as class continues, we're introduced to two new students, and before they can even sit down, this guy stands up and asks one of them out right there in the middle of class. Kagari, how would you like to go see a movie with me this Sunday night, say around eight? Man, what a pimp! Pretty soon all the boys are asking the girl out. Just her, though. Her sister? Eh. She kind of looks like a bitch. As the males in the class fight over who will take Kagari out, she decides to solve the whole problem by taking off her clothes. And at five minutes in, we get our first taste of TNA. Or as the Japanese like to call it, fan service! And believe you me, there's plenty more where that came from. So if cartoon nudity offends any of you, might want to shut it off right here. But, but, please don't. We need the views. You people need to stop behaving like animals and start acting like high school students! I don't know, this seems like pretty typical high school behavior to me. Will you stop embarrassing me?! Oh. I think you've made your point. <laughs> You're touching me. Stop touching oh. me! Oh. Ah! She really is a bitch! Luckily, Kagari breaks a chair over her head, successfully stopping her rampage. I'm sorry you had to witness that, but she has a teensy problem with being touched by men. Wow, those two certainly make an odd first impression. Wouldn't you say, Takshi? Uh, Takshi? Uh, Akari, I demand to know why you've come to this school. You know why! We want our sword back! Sword? You don't mean this sword, do you? I don't think she does because that is a knife. That, that's it! That's our family sword! No, that is your family knife. Our mission here is to retrieve our family heirloom sword. Fine. That's a sword, Inuyasha uses a dildo, Luffy stretches because he has Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, Vash used a prop gun, and the robbers at the beginning of this whole mess were actually using maracas. Ole! The twins say they have trained for the last 10 years and become strong enough to battle Takashi and reclaim their family's sword. Kagari then shows Takashi her bare naked body, sending him spiraling to the floor. Akari notices of this weakness, and instead of just taking the sword then and there, they challenge him to a duel tomorrow behind the gym. Tomorrow afternoon, behind the gym, I challenge you to a duel, and don't forget to bring our sword. Kagari? Yes, Akari? You and I must go train for tomorrow's battle. Right. Wait! You girls can't just leave! <laughs> oh, my tushy! Wait for me, Akari! What a bizarre day of school that was. I mean, imagine being one of the students going home and telling their parents about this. So, uh, how was school today, son? Well, first I was held hostage, then two new girls joined the class, then one of them took off their clothes, and then they jumped out a window. Oh, and, uh, one of them challenged Takashi to a duel tomorrow, so, uh, gonna go back tomorrow and check that out. You're changing school. Oh, come on! After school, Takashi walks home with the girl who he almost killed, and we get a bit of backstory between Takashi and the Toki twins. Yeah, it all started 13 long years ago with an argument between our two fathers. For my family's honor, I will show you that mere swordplay cannot defeat a ninja warrior assassin. Swordship is honor. 
Honor and nobility lead the path of the great warrior. That is the way of the sword. A warrior pure of heart cannot be defeated. If you're so confident, perhaps you'd care to wager your family on the outcome of our battle. And if I win, what do you have to offer in return, Toki? If you win, I'll give you the Toki Family Heirloom Sword. Yeah, Takashi's dad sounds like an ass. I mean, did you hear that? He bet his family on a stupid knife! So instead of calling child services, Atsuko decides to help Takashi any way she can. She makes a mysterious phone call and then they go back to her house. Then they have this strange exchange of dialogue. Well, I was about to hyperventilate. Huh? Here you go, use my handkerchief. Atsuko, I'm indebted to you for life! Thank you! Don't let go! That's it! Keep squeezing me! Like this? Was there a mix-up in the dubbing for this? Why is she pushing him away, yet telling him to hug her harder? Then things get weirder. So the pimp and the teacher show up to help Takashi build up his tolerance to naked girls by bringing over porno eggs. What. The. Hell. Alright Takashi, we've gotta start building up your resistance to naked women. Won't be easy, but damn it, it's our only hope. Uh -oh. Atsuko's plan was to call up someone to help Takashi build up his tolerance to the female anatomy. I get that. But I can't decide which is weirder, the fact that they invited the teacher to help out, or the fact that she even agreed to it in the first place. While Takashi is busy looking at naked ladies, the teacher grabs a magazine out of his hands and decides to see if he can handle the real thing by forcing Atsuko into a leotard so he can oogle them. I think we're gonna be seeing Miss Ayatsuji on the news here pretty soon. Atsuko, I made some snacks! And I also thought we could read verses from the Bible, too! Yamaguchi, it's not what it looks like. Yeah, we're just going to pose for the 16-year-old boy in skin-tight clothing. God, don't have a heart attack. The two girls work out in front of our hero, and he seems to be able to stop his nosebleeds by repeating the days of the week. Okay, I've got it. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Later that night, we see Takashi's sister stepping out of the shower barely clothed. This scene has zero point and is really only put there because we've gone 20 seconds without seeing boobs. The next day, the entire school gathers to watch Takashi fight, but unfortunately our hero is no match for the scantily clad femme fatale. Good work, Kakari. Why, thank you, Kari. But when all hope seems lost, Atsuko throws Takashi her handkerchief, causing him to go insane and start hugging the twin ninjas. I'm indebted to you for the rest of my life! Thank you! The teacher then picks up Takashi's sword and bashes him over the head, ending the fight. Thank you! Now I ask, what was the point of any of that? Why did you spend your entire afternoon yesterday looking at porn and doing aerobics in front of him, only to stop the fight before a victor could be decided? Was this your intention all along? If so, what was the point of yesterday? We're already 20 minutes in, and the only things we've really learned is that Takashi's dad was a dick who bet his family for a stupid knife, and that the twins have been training for the last 10 years to try and get it back. An entire week passes, and Takashi and the Toki twins are still trying to kill each other. There they go, right on cue. At least it keeps class interesting. Later that day, the teacher goes to Takashi's mom to see if she will help convince Takashi to give back the stupid knife. Takashi overhears and says there's no honor in just giving the sword away. Takashi. Look, if the Toki twins wish to regain their sword, they'll have to win it back through combat. There is no honor to be gained from relinquishing it. But apparently there's a lot of honor in betting your family's lives for one. 
he leaves the house and goes to this hill to daydream about his father. It seems to reveal that the sword has a lot of sentimental value for him. Night comes and Takashi races home only to be ambushed by the Toki Twin. But he doesn't stay and fight because it's past his bedtime. Akari! Kagari! I don't have time for this tonight! It's past my bedtime! The twins then give chase and we see Takashi's other sister who is not only naked, but also likes to eat soap. family has a meeting later and they all decide that Takashi should just give back the stupid knife. His response? Well, that was mature. That very same night, we are whisked away to the Toki twins' house. As it turns out, it's the grandmother who was behind this whole mess. Don't you have a class field trip or something planned for tomorrow? <laughs> yes. Will Junior Samurai be there too? Huh? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Just perfect. The next day at the school, field trip, the twins get busy concocting an invisibility potion, and wouldn't you know it, they have to get naked to use it. Well. <sighs> they use their new advantage to get the upper hand on our hero and his... friend? Watch my back, Torai. <sighs> That's one of the confusing things about this show. Even though it's supposed to be a standalone movie, the way the characters act would make you think that it's the fourth episode in an ongoing series. Takashi isn't falling for it, though. He even guesses exactly how the girls are turning invisible. Takashi, what the hell's going on here? Akari's using the Toki family's potion. It's something called the Seventh Elixir, and it changes the color of your skin. Then Tarai, fueled by his lust and armed with a body heat detector, which I won't question how he got or why he decided to bring it with him on a camping trip, set out to find the invisible ninjas, which they do rather quickly. Tarai's given a beating, the ninja's invisibility starts to wear off, they run away, then plan for another day. Boy, I sure am hungry. How about... Hey, Atsuko? Where'd you go? Wow, so that's all it took. They just walked right up and kidnapped his lady. Why didn't he see them coming that time? I mean, she even made noise and yet he still didn't notice she was being kidnapped? Yet how come he could sense them all those other times? Like this part, when he's running home, he didn't hear anything, yet he successfully dodged these throwing stars. Or this part, just a minute ago, when they were invisible, yet he still somehow managed not to get killed. Apparently, his spider sense only stops working when the plot needs some place to go. Takashi gives chase across the city until he is shot at with a messaging arrow, saying that the Toki twins have Atsuko, and she will die if he doesn't bring the knife to them. See her alive again, bring the sword to the Toki castle. Signed. The Toki Twins. Why are you even thinking this over? Your dad bet you for a stupid knife that belonged to another family. You don't need it. In fact, you have a picture right there. In fact, it's not even just a picture. It's a shrine. You have a shrine dedicated to your dad. You do not need the damn knife. While that's happening, Takashi's mom wakes up and follows him outside to the place where his father and the Toby twins' father did battle all those years ago. Oh, I understand now. UNDERSTAND WHAT?! That scene had nothing to do with anything! We already know Takashi's dad won the duel, so what does showing HOW he won it accomplish?! So Takashi goes to the Toki household and is immediately greeted by booby traps like spring-loaded spears, tree bombs, and false floors. He eventually finds himself in an underground cave where he meets the cause of this whole mess. Hello. 
Mr. Toki, what the heck are you doing down here? Well, I know Granny and the twins planned all this, but I feel kind of responsible myself. Really? But I don't understand. I thought you and, and Father were enemies, Mr. Toki. Well, let me see how I can explain this to you, son. Oh, this better explain everything. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Friendship comes in many different forms. Would you like some hot tea? No thanks. I'm in the middle of a battle. Maybe some other time. <laughs> Mr. Toki, Mrs. Toki, nice to see you. Get back here, Takashi! Would you like a cup of tea? Oh, thank you. I knew we never should have taken the girls off their Ritalin. What? That... That actually explains... Well, not everything, but... Explains a lot! Takashi almost makes it to the grandmother, but he's stopped by the twins of their giant tank, which they proceed to crash into their tower, then the head comes off, then it falls onto the tower. Atsuko falls, but is caught by Takashi. In the confusion of the building falling down, Takashi then drops the sword into the falling debris, but doesn't go after it. Apparently, it's worth risking someone else's life over, but not your own. And while the building is crashing to the ground, the grandmother has a flashback revealing why she wants the knife back so badly. Oh, let me guess, because it's gonna be as stupid as Takashi's. Let's see, um, her f mother cheated on her father and then, uh, gambled the family's life savings away and the sword knife, whatever it was, was the only thing they had left. Am I close? Tell me I'm close! Gran, I need you to keep this for me. But that's the Toki family heirloom sword. You have protected it with your life. I can't. I can't take it with me where I'm going, can I? Gran, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Oh dear. It's the only thing you've ever given me. I... I will treasure it always. What the hell was that? Now I feel really bad for the grandmother. It was the only thing her husband gave her before he died? That's a backstory. That is a freaking backstory. Not your father wanted in a duel and that somehow means you'll risk the lives of everyone you know just to keep it. Was this the secret intentions of the writers? An M. Night Shyamalan twist that makes Takashi turn out to be a huge asshole? As daylight arrives, the construction team has come and successfully managed to lift the head of the tank off of Takashi, who has been holding it up all night protecting Atsuko. Then Tarai is there, for no reason. I, I guess he works there. Then everyone sits down for lunch and the Toki twins are there and they seem to like Tarai now, I guess. Look at this. Takashi has even given back the knife to Grandma. Finally, that idiot does one good deed. Speaking of which, where is that guy? Hey, Mom, where did Takashi go? Hmm. Maybe he's with his father. Yeah, I hope he's dead, too. So that was the Samurai, ladies and gentlemen, and no, it's not as bad as I was making it out to be. It's actually pretty funny, both intentionally and unintentionally. The animation is good for its time, and the voice acting cast, you can tell they're trying, even though they're very limited by what the script gives them. And overall, it's just a lot of goofy fun. So if you ever get the chance, uh, just make some drinks, sit down with some friends, and 
be fully aware of what you're getting into, you'll have a good old time. Bought my copy for five bucks at a convention and was money well spent. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed this new Subarashi Selections episode, and until next time, I'm Subarashi signing off.